Hey, what's up guys? Talon back with a new video. Uh, I'm filming this externally because I'm having trouble getting uh, Shadowplay to capture um, what I want to capture without ending the recording because I'm going basically between game and desktop and uh, I'm simply doing that so I can show you guys what is actually occurring here. Um, so I'm playing Starfield and I'm going to show you guys uh, that I am trying to, I'm running Starfield basically on a single P core with uh, all the E cores active. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm simply trying to demonstrate the power of frame gen uh, in Starfield and also other games and how it can basically bypass that CPU bottleneck that you may be experiencing because basically the frame that is being rendered isn't being rendered in traditional sense of being essentially AI generated within the GPU itself. So it never has to leave the GPU and interact with the CPU. So the bottleneck essentially is gone. Uh, so you can see here, basically we're running a 13900K at stock settings. So we have one P core active and all 16 E cores are active. And those are gonna run at 5.5, 4.3. Those are their max default turbo multipliers under load. And they're all being loaded up. Not their boost or anything like that, but what they'll actually run at real time for gaming or for any type of real use for it. Not a single CPU is being hit, right? That's what they boost to. It's kind of how Intel works. You can see here under CPU Z, one P core, 16 E cores, 18 threads. The reason for that is that the P core is hyper threaded, the E cores are not hyper threaded. So 16 plus one is 17 plus it's hyper threading equals 18. That's how we arrive at that. So we're gonna jump into uh, Starfield here. Now I do have uh, this paired with an RTX 4090 or 4080 in the living room. So that's what we're using. Uh, I'll have the overlay from MSI Afterburner here uh, displayed as well. We're going to jump into Starfield, and then I'm going to show you guys. The reason I have the on-screen keyboard open here is simply because uh, the keyboard that I'm using is a um, uh, keyboard that doesn't have um, an N key on it, and you have to you have to have the N key to pull up. Uh, pure dark so you can remap it apparently, but I haven't gone through the trouble of doing that. I've simply just been using the end key Okay, so we're gonna continue. We're gonna hop into this. I do apologize about the reflection there It's being filmed on a 4k OLED LG OLED so We're gonna hop into the game here as soon as this loads up I'll show you guys the settings and the performance so we're right now we're in New Atlantis. I already filmed this once, but of course it ended my recording as soon as I attempted to exit out and show you guys. And look at the frames per second. We're at 155 frames per second. You can see that in the top left corner there. And see if I can run into a building where you can see those FPS more clearly. You can see indoors, obviously FPS are gonna go up just a little bit, up to 160 frames per second. And now we're back outside. And this is just the incredible power of frame generation. Running around in New Atlantis on a single P core with 16 E cores running as well. Uh, and it's it's just chewing the game up. And this is, this is why frame generation should have been included from the beginning, you know, because it would have, it would have solved a lot of CPU performance issues that a lot of people are experiencing in this game because it's very CPU heavy. Um, and the use of frame generation, hopefully they'll add in eventually NVIDIA and AMD's frame generation technologies so that everybody will have the ability to run this game at these high frames. So you can see I'm running. Now I'm running this on low settings, 50% render resolution. Um, and the reason for that is that I'm simply trying to, I'm simply trying to demonstrate to you um, basically a CPU bottlenecking situation. We're at 96% GPU utilization running around New Atlantis on a single P core, which is just insane. We'll come over here, go to display, you can see low settings, 50%. Now if we go up to max, and we'll go to, I want the preset to be on ultra, custom, and I'm gonna disable, because I just, again, I don't like this. So I'm gonna get rid of motion blur, and I don't like depth of field, so that's off. Okay, so we can leave everything else alone there. I got rid of film grain as well. Give it a second, because frame generation has to, basically in menus, it will turn off and then turn back on. That's a new version of frame gen from Pure Dark. And you can see we're still at 96 frames per second. 
even with everything going on here with the highest settings on just that single peak orb. Which is, it's just pretty crazy. I mean, it looks amazing. I'm running up to my spaceship here, running up over 100 frames per second. Again, you are getting a little bit of a performance hit by not using all 16 uh, or eight P cores, and you would obviously never do this. And like, why would you turn off your P cores? This is merely a demonstration. Uh, maybe if you're running something with just six P cores, or you're running maybe an i3, uh, you have all four P cores with the hyper threading, you're going to get even better performance than what I'm probably demonstrating here. I I don't know if the, the E cores are actually doing any of the heavy lifting here. I'm assuming that they are obviously working, um, but how much heavy lifting are they doing is, is really anybody's guess. So I want to show you guys the frame generation menu. Uh, okay, come down here. Now we'll hit end, and that should, in theory, there it is. Finally pop it up. No. Okay. I accidentally hit the tilde key there. Okay, so you guys can see here. Um, it may be actually difficult to see simply because I can't really make the, the font any bigger because I am recording this with a phone. Automatically, you don't have to do any changes anymore with frame generation mod. It just automatically loads. It says replace FSR2 with DLSS. It does this by default. Um, it's got a sharpening here that's uh, checkmarked. Frame generation by default is enabled. And then it also disable FG, which is frame generation and menus, which it does now by default. That was added in in the newest version or the second newest version of frame generation mod, simply because there were some people that were experiencing uh, crashing um, during fast travel or uh, loading to new areas in the game. I haven't experienced it in two days, a single crash. But that is checkmark. The downside to that checkmark being there with that uh, frame generation disabling menus is that when you exit a menu and you enter into a new area, say for example, you go into your inventory, as you exit that inventory or exit the menu, you will get a brief couple second spool up time, essentially where frame generation is turning back on and uh, you do get a slight uh, uh, hitch or stutter uh, in the game as it basically goes from low FPS to high FPS. So you'll see that where I come out of the game here, look at the FPS, they're down 60, 73, now boom, they're right back up. You can see the frame time is now stable. So it takes about a second and it's all spooled back up and frame generation is re-enabled essentially. Again, that was you can disable it, but it was there added as a stability feature. I don't really see any issues with keeping it checkmarked uh, it, if it's just going to add stability and you don't have to worry about crashes. So. Um, yeah, so he added that in uh, to, as a way, as a workaround to basically fix it. So I want to show you guys disabling frame generation now. So we'll uncheck mark frame generation. And you can see we're down to about 76 frames per second. So what do we lose there? At least, at least 30 frames per second or so. So that's pretty crazy amount of frames to have lost simply by you know simply by disabling uh, that feature we'll run in town here somewhere where it's you know a lot more busy I'm just gonna leave that menu up so we don't have to um, enable it again down to the 70s, down to the 60s, 67 frames per second. Remarkably, it's still really, really stable. <laughs> it's just a single peak cord. It makes, it just makes no sense to me that I'm able to run around uh, like this with a single peak cord. It's pretty wild. 60 frames per second. So obviously 55, 57. This is not how you want to play it, right? So let's come back. Let's re-enable frame gen. Give it a second. Frame generation just turned on. 
and now we're up around 85, 86 frames per second. It's kind of going back and forth. So we gained 30 frames per second, not quite double, just by turning on frame generation. And now the game is buttery smooth. And there's no input lag. There, I mean, there's zero input lag. You don't feel anything. And I think that might be because the game doesn't have reflex and boost enabled by default. So when you turn on frame generation, there's obviously a latency hit, but when you turn on frame generation, it's also turning on in NVIDIA Reflex plus Boost. You can see that in the menu there. It may be hard to see, but it's kind of down towards the bottom. You can see uh, Reflex plus Boost is enabled, and you can't turn that off as far as I am aware. So the game doesn't give you boost by default, but then he's modded it in and you get boost, so that's automatically gonna give you a latency reduction. In addition to the higher frames is gonna give you a reduction. So you're probably below what you would get natively in terms of input latency. So it just, it really is incredible. It's, it's insane. It feels so smooth. I mean, it's, it's like another game uh, once you enable this. So anyways, guys, that's what I wanted to demonstrate to you. This video is already way too long. I thought it was something kind of cool to check out. I have an i3. Uh, this motherboard also has the ability to overclock, base clock, overclock uh, CPU, so lock CPUs. I'm thinking about testing that, maybe even putting it at default with an i3 with four cores and eight uh, uh, hyper-threaded. So you basically have eight uh, uh, logical cores, basically like an old school i7. Uh, and then leave that at default and potentially also base clock, overclock that to 5.1 or 5.2, which I've done in previous videos, um, just to see you know, how would an i3 handle this at stock and then also if you you know, happen to have one of those motherboards, mostly just for science, just to see what it'll perform like. So anyways, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out. Maybe. I don't know, guys. I guess we're stuck together. We're not leaving. This, uh, this recording seems to be stuck. I don't know.